in the face of a series of scandals. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is fighting for his premiership. As Johnson seeks to, res uh, to reset Downing Street's functioning, four of Boris Johnson's closest aides have resigned. But the biggest setback came from Johnson's ally of 14 years, Munira Mirza. Now, the key aide left her position following British Prime Minister's attack on Keir Starmer. The remarks also provoked criticism from Finance Minister Rishi Sunak, distancing himself from the comments. Sunak said that he wouldn't have made that false claim. Sunak is considered a leading contender to replace Johnson. And with regard to the news about Manira, the first thing to say is, you know, she was a valued colleague. I very much enjoyed working with her and I'm sorry to see her leave government. I'll miss working with her. Uh, and with regard to the comments, uh, in, you know, being, being honest, I wouldn't have said it. And I'm glad that the Prime Minister clarified what he meant. Three of his other top aides have also resigned. They were all directly linked to the lockdown gatherings. Now, for more on this, our correspondent Ollie Barrett is joining us live from London. Hello to you, Ollie. Thanks for being with us. Now, despite a spate of resignations, Energy Minister Greg Hans said that this is a reset and that Johnson is taking charge of his Downing Street team by making changes. What is the latest that you are gathering from number 10? The latest is that it appears that we might be at number five in terms of aides that have resigned over the last 24 hour period. It's reported this morning in London that Elena Narazansky, who is a special advisor in the policy unit of number 10 Downing Street, may also be stepping down as well. And the battle is now on to try and frame these resignations in various different directions. Number 10 tells us that this is part of Boris Johnson's plan, that people are moving on to other roles or moving out of government. This is a, a relaunch of his administration that he promised to his own MPs earlier this week. Indeed, some of his Conservative MPs have been calling for people like these aides to go for some time, particularly the Chief of Char Staff, Dan Rosenfield, very unpopular with many Conservative MPs who view him as ineffective at best. The difficulty with that attempt uh, at a characterization of all of this as a reset and a relaunch is that we know for a fact that Munira Mirza's departure was not part of the plan. She resigned with a scathing letter uh, saying that Boris Johnson had been levelling scurrilous accusations at the leader of the opposition Keir Starmer and saying that she was resigning because Boris Johnson had at that point and still at this point refused to apologise for those comments. Some of the other resignations we did expect. Martin Reynolds, the principal private secretary for Boris Johnson, he is the man who was caught up in one of those parties at Downing Street that police are looking into, sending an email asking people to bring their own booze to that event. So we expected him to go. Jack Doyle, uh, the head of comms at number 10, we we're expecting him to go as well. Um, the other person that we have been looking at this morning, Elena Narazansky, that is slightly less expected. Um, but as I say, uh, we're now seeing loyal MPs uh, who support Boris Johnson coming out and saying this is what they wanted, this is part of his plan. Critics of Boris Johnson say this is just a sign of a chaotic Downing Street and they wonder whether there are now enough grown-ups in the building to run the place given that so many people are, are leaving in one go, although a couple of them will at least be staying in their posts until replacements have been found. But that again is a, another illustration of the difficulty that Boris Johnson finds himself in. He clearly moved ahead with announcing some of these resignations, bounced into it by Munira Mirza, and now we have some of these senior figures leaving their posts without direct re replacements yet lined up. Mm. Right, and uh, Finance Minister Rishi Sunak, who has uh, so far refrained from publicly criticising the Prime Minister, also said that he would not have made the Prime Minister's comment over Seville. Do we ha see some sort of a rift here? There is clear distance now between Rishi Sunak and Boris Johnson. Rishi Sunak, since this scandal started reaching its peak, 
really has been reluctant to give fulsome support to Boris Johnson. At times he's given him his backing, but it has felt a little bit lukewarm. And those comments that he would not have made uh, these remarks in the way that Boris Johnson did about Keir Starmer just served to underline that distance between the two men. Rishi Sunak is certainly seen as a front runner to take over from Boris Johnson if a vacancy does indeed arise. But it's not clear cut. There are actually quite a few Conservative MPs who are angry with Rishi Sunak at the moment for various different reasons. Some of them feel he hasn't shown enough loyalty to his Prime Minister. Some of them, uh, perhaps a different group of MPs, feel that he's been pushing ahead with a tax rise in April at exactly the wrong time given the cost of living uh, increases that we're seeing in this country. And many Conservative MPs feel he's not governing as a Chancellor in a very Conservative manner. So it is not at all nailed on that if Boris Johnson were to be removed as leader that Rishi Sunak would sweep in behind him. But he does remain one of the very clear front runners if that eventuality unfolds. Right, Ollie, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for bringing us all the latest start of number 10. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.